Hi, I'm Dr. Bertie Sperry, and I need to tell you this story. So, um, here comes a little man, here comes a little man, here comes a little man, here comes a little man. My children and my grandchildren all know about the little man. Here comes a little man, here comes a little man. And when the little man gets to a spot that's ticklish, <laughs> they all know about that. But they never met my Uncle Bus. Uncle Bus was a riot. Uncle Bus, um, to say he had a drink problem is an understatement. But he was functioning and he was funny. And he was the only one in the family who drove in my in my biological immediate family because Uncle Fred also drove. He was around the corner. And Uncle Fred drove a school bus, which was great because all his kids and all my mother's kids, we could all get on the school bus. That's a whole other story. Anyway, Uncle Bus <laughs> drove a long Cadillac and we could all fit in that too. <laughs> and Uncle Bus would get to a light and go like this and he would... Uh, turn towards a one-way street and we go, Uncle Bus, it's a one-way street. And he'd turn around and go, I'm only going one way. <laughs> and Uncle Bus, I thought was married to my Aunt Catherine. Uncle Bus and Aunt, Aunt Catherine were really not married, but they were like a married couple. And Uncle Bus was very, very funny. And he would do that thing. And he also did this thing where for years I thought crabs could scream because he would tell us that the crabs were trying to get out of the pot and he would come at us and, ah! with a crab and, he, and, and he'd make this sound <laughs> go out of the room the crabs are screaming <clears throat> and we thought crabs could scream anyway um, Uncle Bus has been gone for years before my children were born but they know here comes a little man here comes a little man here comes a little man they know that here comes a little woman here comes a little woman here comes a little woman You all tell stories about my mother. <clears throat> you use their phrases and their words. My friend Bryn, whenever we're doing something, she goes, uh-huh, 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 now. <laughs> because that's what my mother would do if she was cleaning, if she was packing, if she was moving anything. Uh-huh, 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 now. My mother has lived long past her time on this earth through someone who never even met her. My mother's phrases and saying, Heish up, heish. Yesterday I was talking to my niece, who's like a daughter, Latoya, and, she, and we were saying something, and I was like, and I don't know when we're going to get it together. And she said, you know what Nanny would say? And I said, no, what? And she said, sorry, sap sucker. <laughs> I hadn't heard it in years. I hadn't heard it in years. But here's this baby who heard her say it, who's passing it back to me. Sorry, sap sucker. If you want to live forever, live now. Live now. Live in such a way that you brighten somebody's day to the point where they pass it on to their children and their friends and, and different people. There, were, there was a little girl in the restaurant the other day and she was trying to show somebody her dress. And the person was like, I'm a stranger. I don't know you, little girl. And I said, I want to see your dress. And she came running back over to me. And she started spinning. I said, let me spin, see it spin. Does it work? And she spun that dress around. That dress spun. And she was so happy to show me her dress. And then she gave me the biggest hug. And I looked up and other kids were running over to me, spinning and showing me their hair and their bows and their things. And it was just joy. And for them, I will continue to live. Something in that moment they will remember years from now and invite a child to spin. We all get to live forever when we create moments of belonging for somebody else. I love you.